this is going to be a slightly different video than I normally do. It's something that I haven't actually done before. I was contacted a, a few days ago by somebody from Elegoo. Uh, it's an electronics company in uh, Shenzhen. And they asked if I wanted a an Arduino starter kit to review. And I said, yeah, okay. So they sent me this. Looks interesting. Um, let's, uh, no reason to delay. Let's just get into it. It's packaged in this bubble bag here. Uh, nice solid looking box. So I guess I should probably just throw in a disclaimer here. Yeah, they sent this to me for free. They contacted me directly out of the blue. No money's changing hands. They don't get a say in uh, in what I say about it. I'm just going to take a peek and uh, see what I got here. So inside the box we have a CD, which, which is cracked in shipping. But hopefully that doesn't matter because I can download that stuff from their website, I hope. So that link that's printed on the cracked CD takes you here, elagoo.com slash download. Um, which is useful if your CD got damaged in shipping like mine did, or if you don't even have a CD player on your uh, computer. So on this first page, it has links that take you to download the Arduino IDE for all of the major operating systems. And then if you scroll down a bit, you'll find all of the various different starter kits that they have, including the one that we've got. If you click on that, it uh, lets you download a zip file. And inside that zip file, there is the copy me first directory. Looks like a bunch of libraries in it. We have data sheets for all of the different uh, things that are in the kit, plus some things that are in some of their other kits. That's handy. These are just standard data sheets that show you everything you need to know and uh, didn't know who to ask about all of the components. We also have instructions in uh, multiple different languages. Looks like there's some basic overview stuff, a packing list and uh, how to set everything up. Module learning. We have some very nicely uh, written lessons here. Shows you the schematic of the circuit that you're wiring up, as well as just a physical representation of it. There's 14 fairly basic lessons there. And then a set of lessons that let you combine multiple modules together complete with zip files with the software in them, I assume. Yes, it does. These are quite well written uh, lessons, very beginner friendly. Explains what's going on in the code. And those lessons are just as nicely written in the other languages as well. Very cool. Nicely done, guys. If you're thinking of buying any of these kits, you're free to, down to go to their page and download the uh, the files that go with it just to see if it is in fact something that you would like to use that's very nice a lot of this stuff is going to seem very familiar to people that have watched my channel for a couple of years uh, and a lot of it is very familiar to me um, it's all quite or it's similar to the starter kit that i got about three years ago when i first got into arduino stuff although this one has a few more things in it might as well start with the star of the show. So this is their own Elegoo branded Arduino R3. Um, a lot of starter kits just come with generic ones or whatever. These guys seem to uh, spin their own boards up, which is pretty cool. Of course, Arduino boards, the whole Arduino ecosystem is open source. So anybody can make their own based on the official Arduino uh, designs. And that's no, uh, no harm, no foul there. So this, yeah, this isn't an original Arduino, but it's also not a knockoff. It's, it's a legitimate thing. So this particular one is based on the dip version of the 18 mega 328 P, which is neat because then, uh, you can, uh, use this to put code onto it and uh, prototype and whatnot. And then when you're done, you can pop the chip out, put it onto a, a breadboard or your own board. Uh, with just a few components and make her go that way. The other chip on the board is an AT Mega 16U2, which it's using as the USB interface chip. It is actually a full microcontroller all on its own. 
but in this case it's being used just to convert the USB to serial in order to, to program the main chip. Oh, that's nice. I hadn't seen this on any of the Arduino boards I've got so far. It's actually got the pins labeled right on the side of the uh, female hitters. I mean, they've all got them labeled down there, but that is a nice touch. We have a prototyping uh, shield. So this prototyping shield, like all shields, just plugs straight onto the top of the thing and extends all the pins out the top. But it also gives you places to solder some components onto. So if you want to make your own shield, um, just to permanent, permanentize a circuit that you've created, you can do that on there. Uh, it's got a couple of LEDs. The reset button is brought up. The ICSP header's broken out. There's a bunch of five volts on the ground broken out. So with that, you also get a little breadboard. It's adhesive back, so you could choose to stick it on there if you just want a breadboard to piggyback on there, or you can just use it standalone. That's what I tend to do with the uh, with the one that came with my kit that I got years ago. What else? It comes with a nine volt battery. Let's keep looking at modules and stuff. Um, how about this guy? Uh, this is an ultrasonic uh, distance finder, distance sensor. Um, basically one of these is a speaker and one of these is a microphone at ultrasonic frequencies. Um, you connect it up uh, to the Arduino, run the demo sketch. However, if you want to see more of what this guy can do, I did a video on this a while back. Uh, I'll link to that video and actually, I've done demos of a bunch of the different things that are in this kit, just off ones that I've already got. And I'll put links to as many of those as I can find or remember down in the description. Uh, what else do we have here? We have a breadboard power supply. These little power supplies can be handy if you, uh, if you pay attention to what you're doing. Um, this thing plugs onto just a standard breadboard, a standard full-size breadboard and it puts power onto these sets of power rails. These jumpers here, you can either select 5.5 or 3.3, and the two sides can be different. So you can have five volts on one side and three volts on the other side, which is handy. So what do we have next in here? We have a plain old DC motor. People ask me quite often what starter kit they should look for, um, things like that. I always tell them to find one that's got as many different types of motors in it and as many different ways of getting inputs and outputs as possible. So I2C, SPI, analog inputs, digital inputs. Um, so this DC motor, you probably don't want to run it directly off an Arduino pin. It may pull a little bit too much current. I don't know, I'm just guessing, but the Arduino pins are a little bit sensitive to, uh, to overloading. So you'd want some kind of a driver um, I think I saw in here, yeah, there's a couple of transistors in here. So a transistor would be a good choice to, uh, to drive that and just sort of isolate it a little bit. I see in here, <laughs> we have a fancy little flower kind of uh, fan blade that will go onto that. So you can control your, uh, your fan from your Arduino. Speaking of motors, here is a servo motor. Uh, this is a little nine gram micro servo. Uh, again, I've used these in a few different projects. Uh, I'll link to a couple of them down below. Th those are easy to control. Um, again, a library, a software library from the Arduino IDE. It's already there. A power, a ground, five volts of ground, and one control pin from any pin off the Arduino. And you can uh, control this little motor. Now, servo motors are uh, positionable. And this particular type... You can put it anywhere from zero to 180 degrees repeatably and predictably. These are really handy for a lot of different projects. And like I said, I'll, I'll link you to one of the projects that I did with, with a bunch of these earlier. Next in, we have this little module. This is based on the ULN 2003, which is a seven uh, circuit Darlington transistor array. This board is only using four of them and it's using them as motor drivers. It's set up specifically as a stepper motor driver, but you could use it just as a regular motor driver as well. For instance, for that DC motor. So you connect uh, four inputs to this thing from four GPIO pins on the Arduino. You connect up some voltage there and you plug in your stepper motor. 
Yes, there is one in the kit. Of course there is. Um, so that just plugs straight into there. And as you would expect, I have a video already on driving stepper motors in various different ways, including this particular combination right here. What else have we got in here? This is an infrared receiver. Uh, you'll typically use this one with um, infrared remote control or just an infrared LED for beam break if you want to uh, do that. But this one just has three pins on it. So one will be power, one will be ground, and one will be the signal coming out of that. This just keeps giving and giving. What else we got in here? We have a four uh, digit seven segment LED display. And there's also a single digit one. These ones, the common pin is on the center of the top and bottom there. And then the digits are arranged on the other uh, eight pins. And this particular one looks like a red one and it is common cathode. So the uh, center pin, the common pin is negative and you put positive voltage onto the segment pins to make it go. Like any LED, you need a current limit on this. Uh, the easiest and most common way is to use a resistor and I think I saw some somewhere in this kit. I did see them definitely on the website. We'll get to them. We have a DHT11 type temperature sensor. Again, um, a simple library, three pins, uh, power ground and one signal pin back to the Arduino. I've used very similar ones of this to uh, build the data logger for my beer fridge. And I have another one of them on this project that I've just had forever, um, which is an LCD, a uh, smaller Arduino board and Oh, that's not the DHT11, but it operates very, very similar. That's the uh, cousin of it. I think that's the DHT22, but it's almost, it's almost the same. It's actually the same library that controls them both. What else we got here? We have a 10k ohm uh, trimmer potentiometer, just a little guy, breadboard friendly form factor, super useful. Probably the first thing that a beginner is going to use that for is uh, to adjust the brightness of an LED. There is actually uh, one example comes with the IDE called Knob, which does exactly that, it uses this and an LED. We have a relay. This particular relay has a 5 volt coil and can control up to uh, 10 amps of 30 volts DC or 10 amps of 250 volts AC. Warning to beginners. Don't mess around with AC voltage until you, unless you uh, know what you're doing. A relay can be used to have a small voltage, AKA this five volts, control a large voltage with safe isolation. Uh, these two pins here are the coil, which is the control side that just gets five volts and ground. And these three are the switch. It's a, a single pole double throw switch. So, the common will either be connected to this one or this one, depending on whether the relay is energized or not. And again, you don't necessarily want to control a relay directly off the pins of an Arduino because it draws more power than the Arduino itself can provide. And when it shuts down, there's a thing called inductive kickback, which you can look up uh, easily but uh, that can damage the thing. So you'll want to drive this with a transistor, probably. You could also use the stepper driver, uh, but doing that's outside the scope of this video. Now let's go into the back here. We have a whole bunch of breadboard jumper wires, uh, commonly called DuPont wires. Uh, and those are just super handy for plugging things together on the breadboard, plugging between the breadboard and the Arduino, plugging between the breadboard and modules. This bundle is all male to male wires of various lengths. We have the typical little blue uh, USB cable. Use that to uh, program the Arduino from your computer. Get in there. That one's tight. It's brand new. Um, you can also power the Arduino from your laptop or from your computer's, uh, USB. However, don't draw too much power from it. Uh, it may not be healthy for your computer's USB port. Next in here, we have a 16, uh, by two, 16 characters this way by two rows, uh, LCD display. Now this one 
there's two different versions of this one. Well, it's kind of the same one, only two different uh, variants. This one is the basic one. Uh, you connect up four data pins and power and ground, and I think two or three control lines to the Arduino, and you can get a display like I showed you earlier in my little temperature thing. Um, and you can write whatever you want on this thing under, under control of the Arduino. What else is in the box here? Uh, we have an infrared remote control, which will play nicely with this little sensor here. Again, it comes with a battery. Batteries included. Well played, Elegoo. Well played. We have a 9 volt battery snap, uh, which goes down to this barrel jack, which is the barrel jack that plugs into there. So you can put 9 volts straight into there. And then it has a regulator, the same one there, you see. Um, that'll drop it down to the five volts that it needs, or you can plug it into there to power your breadboard power supply. We have a little joystick and its knob. This is a very common joystick, uh, very similar to the ones that you find in typical game controllers. So it has two potentiometers built into it, uh, one for horizontal, one for vertical, and there's a little clicky switch button there when you push down. And for the connections, you have ground and five volts, you have uh, variable resistor X, variable resistor Y, and the switch. So you connect the two variable resistor input or outputs to an analog, a pair of analog inputs on the Arduino, and there are six of those. So you can connect up multiple analog inputs. And if you choose to use the, uh, the little clicky button on there, you connect that up to a digital input, and away you go. You can create your own game. I've seen people use these as well to uh, do cursor control on on uh, display like that. Lots of things you can do with that. Well, so we have a pack of resistors of various different values. So it's 220 ohms, and there's more of those than anything else, and that's reasonable. That's not a bad resistor to use with LEDs. This is a 330, 5.1K, 1 meg. Uh, good for pull-ups and pull-downs, 10K, 100K, also good for pull-ups and pull-downs potentially, 10 ohms and 2K. So that's a pretty wide variety. And again, more than most of these Arduino starter kits come with. Also in the box, we have a full-size breadboard. Those are super handy. It's one thing that most, uh, most hobbyists discover is they always end up getting more and more breadboards. I think I've got about six of them sitting just over there. This one looks like a fairly good one too. Yep, that goes in very nicely, even though there's, what, 16 pins there all going in together. That's a lot of force uh, pushing back against it, but it went in fairly smoothly. So a quick diversion into a breadboard. So along with the edges, you have a negative voltage power rail and a positive voltage power rail, and the same thing again here. Um, so all these pins on the negative rail here are connected together, and all these ones are connected together, but this one and this one are not connected to each other. So you can have different voltages, top and bottom. You can, if you want to, just put jumper wires across. That's not a big deal. And then on these, this whole field of pins here, each column on one side of the middle is connected together. So those five pins there are connected together. Those five pins there are connected together. These five are connected together, but they're separate from these ones. So you can put an integrated circuit or whatever across the middle there, and then plug your jumper wires in to hook up whatever you want. What else have we got in here? We have some more jumper wires. This time they're male to female, which are also useful. You can plug the male end into the breadboard and you can plug the female end into something like this guy. So it doesn't have to be sitting right on the breadboard. It can be measuring something a little bit off the breadboard. So we're coming down now to just the raw components in here, which you're getting more, once you start getting into raw components, you're getting more into actually building circuits and not just plugging uh, mod pre-made modules together. So you're, you're starting to get into actually doing electronics. So we've got two diodes, uh, one in 4007. So those are just uh, plain old common uh, rectifier diodes. 
we have two uh, photoresistors, uh, sometimes called CDS cells or cadmium sulfide cells. You shine light on them and the resistance changes. So you can use them for light dark sensors, um, things like that. This is a thermistor. It's a resistor whose value changes based on the temperature of it. Then we got four little tactile switches or, or push buttons. Among other things, they can plug into the breadboard too, right across the middle there. And so you can pick up uh, the switch there with some jumper wires and take them somewhere else to make them do something. Next we have a big bag of LEDs. And again, a variety of types. Looks like there's about six each of uh, red, blue, green, and yellow or amber. And then there are these two LEDs with four pins each. These are RGB LEDs. The common long lead on this one is negative, uh, cathode. So this is a common cathode LED. There is the blue on that first wire, the first connection. There's the green on the second one. And the red on the third one. And like so many things, you could just plug that into the breadboard, run some uh, jumper wires to it. Uh, for this, you'll want a series resistor to limit the current. Um, again, a beginner is going to want to uh, look up uh, Ohm's Law on Wikipedia and uh, find a resistor. I would suggest out of the 220 or the 330 for 5 volts. Put that in series just to limit the current so you don't damage this and so you don't draw too much current from the Arduino and damage it. That goes with any LED, but it's it's a super simple thing and it's uh, something that, again, anybody who's uh, playing with electronics is going to need to figure out at some point. Might as well start with the basics right at the beginning. And the last thing in here, oh, there's a little package desiccant, but that's just a bonus. I don't think they count that in the uh, in the parts count. Um, the last thing in here for real is this little bag of stuff. I see it's got a couple of integrated circuits in it. We have a buzzer. We have two different buzzers. So one of these is going to be an active buzzer and one's going to be a passive buzzer. The passive buzzer is essentially a speaker. You have to uh, send it a signal, um, some kind of a, an alternating current signal to make it make noise. The other one is an active buzzer. Which means you just give it a DC voltage and it will make noise. What else have we got in here? We have a little tilt switch. This little guy just has a, a little metal ball inside it and when you tilt it this way it closes the switch or turns the switch on. You tilt it in the other direction it turns the switch off. That can be kind of fun to play with. We have two transistors here. These are both 2N2222A transistors, which are common, super common, generic little NTN transistors. Those uh, transistors can be used for either amplifying a signal or a, a, as a switch. So you can uh, use them to turn on and off heavier loads or larger loads, like motors, for instance. Then we have two ICs here. This one is slightly has a slightly bent pin, but that's fairly easy to fix. You can just gently take a pair of needle nose pliers and straighten those out. That's just shipping damage. That's nothing serious. This guy is a 74HC595N, which is a shift register chip. It takes a serial input, a serial data input, and breaks it out to eight different output pins. So with one serial output from the Arduino, you can light up, for example, eight separate LEDs. There's a lot of other things you can do, but that is one of the, uh, one of the easiest first projects to do with one of those. It, it lets you uh, basically save on how many pins you've got on there if you need them for something else. And this other IC, is an L293D, which is an H-bridge driver, um, commonly used for driving motors, DC motors, bidirectionally. So you can, uh, you can reverse it quite easily. There's another trick that the Arduino can do. Some of its output pins are what's called PWM pins. So you can essentially use that to either dim an LED 
or you can use it to adjust the speed of this motor. So with the H-Bridge driver and this motor and that, you can have a bi-directional multi-speed motor. Uh, and I also have a video about uh, H-Bridge drivers, um, which will be in the links down below. Well, that is quite the, uh, quite the haul of stuff. I think any beginner would be well served to start with a, with a starter kit like this. Um, this is actually, as I said before, more complete than the starter kit that I began with three years ago. And look where it's led me. Uh, wow. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of different projects that I've done with, uh, with modules exactly like these. So I'll, I'll link to those. And, uh, yeah. So as I said at the beginning, quick disclaimer, Elegoo didn't pay me for this. They just give me this as a, as a review sample. They didn't uh, tell me what I could say and what I couldn't say. So this is my honest opinions of that you've been hearing me yammering on about for the past while. Um, I hope you found it informative. Um, thanks for watching. I will talk to you later.